we have with us Mr. Basil Chapman from Harvard University. Basil, how are you doing today, my friend? Hi, Larry. How are you? Good to Byron, speak you with knew, you. Uh, you. You knew that I went to Harvard, didn't you? Yeah, I drove by myself a few times. No, no, I went to lunch there, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you seeing in the market? Are you, are you seeing this crazy volatility that I'm seeing, or am I just well, being... Well, uh, I must... You know, I. it's really interesting because as far as I'm concerned... It, you see this all the time. It's just that today it was a little squashed and it happened a little quicker. But I, you know, you can see the. I, you know, I, I've got a. In fact, I've got a hundred. I don't know if you can see it. I've got a hundred and twenty minute chart up here, and there's a pattern that I call. It's the Eiffel Tower. What happens is the price spikes up sharply and then gives it all back almost in one move. And mm -hmm. it looks like it looks like the Eiffel Tower goes goes straight up and straight down, a very narrow uh, lane up and down. It also looks like an uppercase A and it fails. Uh, but then what happened is I have a pattern that I call, and I thought I'd talk about this just because you're you're all about patterns. I've got your book right here at the back. Trade what you see. I love reading it. Um, there's just always so much to learn. But there's a pat there are patterns that I look at all the time, and one is I don't know if you've noticed it, but sometimes. The chart just goes into this really long, narrow tra uh, rectangle. And you keep thinking it's going to break to the top and it refuses. It's like a glass tube and the little ping pong ball is bouncing around. And then you think it's going to break to the bottom and it doesn't. goes right back from the bottom to the top to the bottom. It just keeps doing that until eventually it pops out a little bit to the top side. And then it usually comes all the way back and takes out the low and just it, it wipes out longs and shorts. And then it goes back into that channel. Or there's another channel that I love to look at, which is the large rectangle. My expression for the long, narrow rectangle is it lasts a lot longer than your patience. And the large rectangle, which is what we're looking at right now, mm -hmm. is this one that you can see. I don't know if you can see it, but I've yeah, got a perfect. Pattern. Yeah, it looks like right. a big. Uh... You see this cup formation? Yep. And I, and I always talk about cup. Here's the one-minute chart of the E-mini. Here's this cup formation I call about price symmetry. We can get the exact number of bars to the upside to the number of bars to the downside. But every once in a while, you get a lopsided one where there's a rectangle formation. And I'm always looking at a low bar that takes you to at least four higher peaks. Peak A, the next one, even by one penny is leg B, it starts, and then it becomes a peak B if it makes a peak. And then it goes C and a D. And fourth highest peak is the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology. It can go higher, but it really the objective is to get you to that D. And if you're looking at this pattern of the rectangle, you can see there's this cup formation. I've outlined this this in in pink. You can just see it. It's, well, it's not pink on yours. It's gray. But there's this big rectangle, and it has already gone to a D. But I, I know you don't use these things, but I use a nine period moving average, a 14 period moving average for the very short term. I mm -hmm. use the MAGD, the moving average convergence divergence. I use the stochastic over 80 percent or under 20 percent. And these are all positive at this particular time. So here we are in this rectangle and we've gone slightly above the previous high and it's trying its best to get to the upper part of the rectangle. And my rule of thumb here is that if this sharp move down starts to make higher highs and higher lows it can make those four peaks that takes you to just under the previous high right on or just above and then you've got to be careful so now we've got this rally that's going and you can see the one minute chart so i'm using these particular techniques and in my show the tiger technicians hour at 10 o'clock east each morning eastern time i often do these i often do them live as well just to show the veracity of the techniques Hey, folks, stay with us. Basil Chapman and I will be back to talk more about charts in just a moment. 877-927-6648. Okay, folks, we're back and we're talking with Basil Chapman. And he was, uh, this is Larry Pesavento and Basil Chapman setting in for Tom O'Brien today. Basil, you were referring to that cup and handle pattern. I don't know if you remember uh, when when they started uh, investment business daily way back in i think it was 81 I remember or 82. It well yes yeah well the number two man beside bill is was uh it was al mcgregor uh, al passed away about oh four or five years ago well uh, his son his son 
uh, Mike happens to be my daughter's significant other. Oh, very <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, they, they've known the family because they went to high school together all those years. It was her second boyfriend, I believe. She married her first boyfriend. He passed away uh, seven, eight years ago. And then, of course, she's, he's been, she's been with Mike, uh, Mike ever since. Good family, nice people. But Bill O'Neill was a real class act. And uh, he, he said he could. What he did to, to yep. charts, I mean, it was unbelievable. There was nothing in the Wall Street Journal. I yep. hated that have a chart. But he produced the most incredible. Uh, it just—it wasn't just a um, financial newspaper. It was just a genuine newspaper. It had so many yep. articles, and then he produced charts. And ever since then, we've started to look at charts. But he was the one that uh, every—I I look at those all the time. I still look at them. Um, it was—it's a, a fantastic paper. Yes. So the, yeah, the, he, um, he, he surpassed the Wall Street Journal, I think, 20 years ago. It's uh, pretty close to that because I know he just uh, did an incredible job. Anyway, tell did. me, uh, uh, Basil, so, when you, what is your favorite? Do you have one favorite stock that you'd like to trade? Someone just asked me that question, and so we pass it on to you. Do you have a favorite stock that you like, Apple or is Google or somewhere? Or is it just what you, you know, see on the plate? I, I do the futures all the, the S and P futures all the time, one minute charts all the time. I, I'm, I mean the trading, I'm notating it all the time. It's, it's a learning instrument for me as well as a practical instrument. Um, and, and as you know, fractals, these patterns are human nature, so they get repeated. You would not be able to tell that this was a one minute chart or a monthly chart. Charts are charts. Sure. They look the same. It doesn't matter what time frame. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's just uh, it's just a speedier way of doing it. I have limited time sometimes to do you know, a, a trading. So uh, mm -hmm. if I'm able to do something on a one-minute chart uh, instead of a, a daily or a, a one-hour chart, why not? It's mm -hmm. just the same thing. I'm, I'm looking for my peak D's and E's and get out. Mm -hmm. That's just a, a nice way to do it. But what I want to do, actually just mention to you is that the same patterns refer, if I'm looking at the daily chart, you'll see there's another big rectangle right here. In my, let me just, on the left is the daily, in the middle is the weekly, on the right mm -hmm. is the monthly chart. And here we made that fourth highest peak, peak D, uh, right here at 34,342. And I believe that was the 13th uh, of, uh, no, was that, uh, it was the, yes, the 13th of January. And we pull back quite sharply. Uh, we've been long the diamonds through the various, either both the diamonds and the three times long the UDOW, the most recent trading position. We, we've taken some of it off. But one of the reasons is he has this rectangle and it keeps bumping up against resistance. And if people don't recognize resistance, then the, the, they anticipating a move to the upside that could stall for a while until that resistance has got enough momentum to break out of it. And look at this. This is the about the fifth or sixth time in over what is it, about two and a half three weeks that that the Dow is stored right there in the thirty four thousand uh, three yeah. hundreds, and as long as you recognize that, it tells you you could treat this as a trading band. And if you look at that rectangle in the weekly chart, look, the, there's very little difference. I'm going to show you. This is the ten minute chart. There's that rectangle. It got stalled at the resistance. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. I'm looking at the weekly chart. So you've gone from a ten minute chart to um, a weekly chart. It does two different time frames completely and yet the patterns mm. repeating as yes, that rectangle stuck in a rectangle formation. So I love doing this and if people are interested they can come to my show at 10 o'clock uh, Eastern time on, uh, on the weekdays and I do in the Tiger Technicians Hour. I show these charts, I do them sometimes live on the spot so that you can see exactly what's going on. And you don't have to use all these different techniques. In fact, sometimes you could just use the nine period over the 14 period. Look at this. The weekly chart is very strong. To get this weekly chart to change in the Dow, you have to. You probably have to see a close below 32,800, and it's at 34,142 right now. So some of the technique can keep you in a position a lot longer than you think if you mm -hmm. use the right uh, technical indicators. Well, it certainly doesn't look bearish. That's for sure. This looks like a pattern ready to bust out to the upside. And also, it's very important to have these digestive. I mean, this is just a digestive phase right now. It has a different chart pattern for the S&P. I'll just move over to the S&P. On the left is the daily. In the middle is the weekly. On the right is the monthly. And you can see there's a pattern that I call the falling axe. It just looks like an expanding cone leaning on its side. And it has a higher lows, sorry, lower highs and much lower lows. And all of a sudden, it finds some support, and it starts to make the cup formation. If it takes out that resistance level, 
it, it can quickly go to the next peak on the left side, and then it could even go to the original peak, in this case, 4195.44 in the S&P. So, so far, this is acting very well. It's, it's, it's holding um, the key metrics that I look at. Look, the nine-period moving average in the daily is way over the 14. And finally, you've got, I call this the inside track repellent zone. Look at this pattern. It's such a simple thing. I just join the lines. And the green line says, as soon as you break out of it, that's good. And if you stay in it under the pink line, it's not good. And look how many times exactly on that. I haven't made anything up. These are the lines. The S&P, until four weeks ago, could not break out of that trend line. Now it has. So that's another positive. So I'm looking at many positives, but it is a rotational market. And uh, as such, you've got to be uh, quite specific in where you are. But this is a very important thing for me, finally. You've got the uh, S&P weekly chart improving. The monthly still has a lot of work to do, but this monthly is improving, and the MACD is good. Stochastic's at 84%. That's good. This is an unbalanced volume here. I like balance, unbalanced volume. This is the old Jangrel, Joe Granville, mm -hmm. unbalanced volume. It's just a single uh, price movement here before you have to add up all those figures. Every mm -hmm. single day, a running total was It was so difficult. I used to do it way back when I started. So now you've got automated lines, and the line says uh, the on-balance volume in the weekly chart is still not great, so that needs to improve. But, you know, mm -hmm. you can use all these techniques just as you have your specific techniques. You look at them, you monitor them, and then you mm -hmm. make a judgment on whether or not that's, that's the position you want to be in. And uh, so that's what we do all the time. And um, as I say, I like to I like to use technical indicators uh, as much as mm -hmm. I can. Sometimes you get in the way of thinking things. Mm -hmm. through. Sometimes <laughs> thinking is not good in this business. <laughs> yes, for sure. You know, when you mention Joe Granville's name, anybody that knew Joe, if they hear his name, they have to smile because he was a real gentleman. A he just, well. he and his wife were just so wonderful. And you folks, you couldn't pick up a check if Joe Granville was around, no matter what the price was. He, your money was no good when you were around Joe Granville. He 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 laughed sometimes. And he said, "Well, I probably regretted some of that, but uh, he sure made an influence on so many people." But what a generous fellow he was, and he had so many stories, much like you do, uh, Basil. And it, it's really it was really fun to be around him. So when you mentioned his name, a big smile came on my face because I could uh, literally. And he was a good friend of Arch Crawford's, by the way. Uh, was, and so yeah. I met I met him with Arch a couple times, but he was a he was a real class act. I mean, we're, so we're, talking that, about, we're, we're talking about um, someone who added a lot to the technical analysis, not necessarily always huh. used it correctly himself, but wow, he, yep. he, I think he added a lot. When he spoke, the Dow moved 20 or 30 points. That's when the Dow was trading at seven or 800. That yeah. was, I, I, yeah. I loved him back in the late 70s, yeah. too, and then in the 80s was a little different. But yeah, yeah. I, in the beginning, that's how I got, that was technically how yeah. I started in this business. Nice um, to speak hey, with you, Larry. Hey, okay, Basil, thank you very much, and thanks for helping out today, buddy. I really appreciate it because you've got great stuff and people like to hear it. We'll be right back, boys and girls. Stay thank tuned. You. Thank you, Basil.